Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to create an extended event in SQL Server. And in this particular demo, we'll be learning how to navigate to extended events in SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio, how to create new extended event session using C uh, session wizard uh, using SQL Server Management Studio, how to create event package, option to save event output. Uh, we'll be using two ways to uh, create extended event in SQL Server. One is SQL Server Management Studio and other is using T-SQL script. So let's go ahead and do this. Here's my SQL Server. Uh, I'm connected with my SQL Server and my SQL Server instance name is SQL Test and this is SQL Server Management Studio. So if you wanted to navigate to the extended event in SQL Server, you need to expand your SQL Server Explorer right here once you're connected and then you go, you go to management. And once you exp uh, expand the management, you will see extended events right here. And if you expand extended events, these are by default extended events gets created in SQL Server 2012 and SQL Server two, uh, 2014 always on underscore health and system underscore health these are by default with the installation uh, if you don't have always on uh, configured then always on underscore health extended uh, this session will be disabled as you can see right here there's a little red arrow uh, that means that uh, is disabled and system health is right here in this particular demo we're going to go ahead and create a new session and this session is going to be about the database events such as who created the database who deleted the database what was the login id etc so let's go ahead and uh, uh, create new session we'll, we'll in order to create new session you get two options when you right click on sessions new session wizard and new session this will not be wizard if you are creating session the first time and you don't have uh, much how now how to create a uh, session uh, in extended events then you should basically pick the first option and i'm going to pick the first option just to go through everything this will go through everything and this will basically you have to um, once you're comfortable with the creating new sessions two or three sessions you have created then you can pick the second option new sessions so we're gonna go ahead and go with the wizard so click on new session wizard first is an introductory um, window we don't have to look at that if you don't want to you can click on do not show this again and it'll go directly to the setup session properties so we're gonna go ahead and click next first thing that you need to do is uh, put the session name this session name should be meaningful in my case I'm going to go ahead and say database events so I'm going to go ahead and collect all the events related to the database which are enormous but uh, um, maybe I can just filter it uh, filter the name uh, make uh, make name a little bit more meaningful to say that uh, I just wanted to uh, look at database create and delete and login and all that kind of information but this demo purposes you can just go ahead and uh, name your session meaningful session you have up here that if you wanted to start a session if you click on session uh, is gonna start at the end of the this wizard once uh, um, and also start the event session at the uh, server startup if you click on this anytime SQL server services start it will uh, start the event and basically in production you do want to do this but I'm not going to do it right now because I want to uh, basically do it manually so I'm not going to go ahead and click on that so go ahead and click next <clears throat> you have templates and th these templates are basically for performance and tuning and they are more related to if you click on that you get a certain uh, uh template up here this is count query locks the, the these are the uh for the for the querying locks on the query and uh, query batch uh, the, these are query execution related events system monitoring activity tracking connection tracking tracking and database log file io tracking these are basically very important for any dba to look at so uh that's why it is in template you can go ahead and use the template and you don't have to configure anything else but uh in this demo we're not going to use template we're going to go ahead and say do not use template we need to pick up we need to make our own session let me pick and choose so let's go ahead and click next these are all the events right here event library you can see right here there are 
lot of events so easy way to basically if you are looking to just do the database related event you just put database here and it picks up every event that has a word database in it so what I'm going to do is that if somebody attaches database somebody created database and somebody detaches database database started database stopped so these are the events database related events that I want to capture in this session so I'm going to go ahead and click next if you wanted to basically look at main if you um, let me expand it a little bit more if you click on any session it'll give you a little bit description up here uh, right here you can uh, say event names only event names and description so if you click on that and event field only and if, if you click on all then it's going to basically give the basically this is the default or I am going to go ahead and do event only so these are my events that I want to capture that whenever the database is attached to this particular SQL Server um, SQL Server instance I want to know I want to capture that and what information I want to capture you will see it in next screen and database created database detached started and stopped so let's go ahead and click next and these are the events that you can these are the basically global capture fields that you can select in, in any event and they are uh, global that means that they are common to every event that you wanted to capture and mostly these this is the information that we're looking for so all the events that we wanted to capture these are the in, this is the information basically these are the fields that we're looking for so I'm I want to know that what was the database name that was created or deleted database ID and I want to know the username and I want to know also up here the username that was anti authority if there's SQL server account you wanted to know that too so let uh, let's see what else principal if um, and SQL Server principal name so we're gonna go ahead and click next and up here is the filter among the filter what you would like to see that if you have ever used SQL Server profiler you would see that uh, you know if uh, you just wanted to look at a particular database you what you do is you need to click on field some for some reason my screen is a bit messed up so if it wouldn't stay if I click on this but you will get you you see a little bit flickering on the left side but uh, if you go like this just scroll your mouse then it'll tell you all about that but this is not a, a, a nice interface but uh, this is just because of my computer so if you click on that it'll give you options of all the filter that you wanted to do and filter means that if there are two or three databases that that are critical to you and you wanted to know if they those are the database gets created or those are the databases gets deleted even or stopped or went offline or something like that you would like to know that then you can go ahead and pick and put your filter up here and that's the ba basic difference also uh, main difference between SQL Server profiler because up here you can go ahead and define your filter uh, on event level in my uh, SQL Server profiler you have to define your f uh, filter on session level so this is uh, on event you can go ahead and keep adding the fields right here so if you wanted to delete something that you don't like you need to right click here and delete clauses I'm not going to filter anything so I'm going to go ahead and click next up here you will get options that if you wanted to save this data right here save the data to a file for later later analysis if you wanted to look at the live session you don't have to select this but if you wanted to uh, look at the output later on you might not have time or you might have a specific time in your mind that you wanted to just go ahead and uh, configure this session and later on you wanted to look at that you can do that so we're gonna go ahead and click on save the data and we're gonna go ahead and browse and go in C and we'll create uh, up here we'll pick a folder and we'll go ahead and save this file and we'll basically let me cancel this and let me control C and then go ahead and go into 
this folder you can pick any folder to save this file so this is my file name I'm going to go ahead and click OK up here by default it gets uh, in GB keep in mind that you can't just go ahead and do 1 MB because 1 MB is not recommended the minimum size that you could do is probably 512 I'm not sure so don't quote me on that so I'm going to go ahead and go with 1 gig and maximum uh, you don't want to fill up your uh, drive so maximum files that can be there is uh, 5 1 gig can hold a lot of data believe me so um, I don't think that uh, uh, running 24 hours um, trace or I'm, I'm sorry uh, extended event will fill up your uh, 5 gig right here which means it's 5 gig number of maximum files is 5 gigs so that one file would be 1 gig and then next file would be created and next option you will get work with only the most recent data that would be um, especially in SQL Server 2014 when uh, most of the stuff that you can run in memory and you, uh, that stuff is in M in memory and you're uh, trying to troubleshoot right away on, on something then you can click this option and it'll just basically go ahead and go look into the buffer and see what's happening and capture any event that's happening in the buffer uh, before it it'll be written to the um, disk or uh, before any anything else happen it'll go look into the buffer and get that event for you so we're gonna go ahead and click next and it'll give you a chance that uh, verify your selection was correct if you have made any wrong selection I would recommend in production you should always expand every thing right here because you have a chance to go back and look at it so as you can see right here um, filters are not applied as far as uh, my session goes but you can apply your filter whenever you want to and you can also script this whole session and if this is the session that you need you're using for troubleshooting a certain application and it's happening more than often and it, this this session gives you the data that would you would like to uh, uh, look at it then you can go ahead and script this and create session on ad hoc basis so we're gonna go ahead and click finish and as you can see the event session has successfully been created however the event session has not been started as you can see start the event session immediately after session was created we have not clicked on that so we're gonna go ahead and close this and I want to show you that right here our event database event is created and it's disabled at this moment so let's go and look at the components of the database event as you can see right here there is a package and if you explore the package since it's disabled it won't let us explore the package so let's go ahead and start the session and we'll go ahead and explore right now we do not have any data so let's leave the database event session running and let's go ahead and create a database I'm going to go ahead and call it demo alright so our database is created this session should be basically uh, capturing this data for some reason uh, if you right click and look at watch live data it takes a whole lot of time to retrieve the information from the data but if you look at it right here it is saving to C and we'll go right here and as you can see the database event right here so let's go ahead and delete this data all this should be captured in our event it takes a little bit time uh, to retrieve the data in my case um, I haven't done it on basically on a, a real good system so I'm not sure how long it's gonna take so we're gonna go ahead and stop and go ahead and view the event data all right so we didn't stop the session I'm sorry I, I was going to say that we need to stop the session 
Otherwise, um, up here, if we stop the session, then we wouldn't be able to go ahead and explore the data. As you can see that uh, in package, the data was collected and database started at this time, database created at this time, database stopped at this time. When you delete the database, database gets stopped. Before it gets deleted, then you can go ahead and look at this data. And if you click on any of that, these are the fields that we selected that what we would like to look at, as you can see right here. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, let's go ahead and load our script. Right here is our script. So as you can see that uh, it's creating an event uh, session on server uh, and uh, the database event is the name of the session and it's uh, going on attaching database, creating database and started database and it's going to save on this particular, particular location. So anytime you know this, you wanted to do the analysis later on, you can go and uh, fire up uh, and open this uh, database event uh, file and that you can go ahead and take a look. And startup state as we did in SQL Server Management Studio, it's uh, off right now and uh, we'll keep it off and then we'll go ahead and turn it on. So let's go ahead and execute. As you can see the command uh, executed successfully. Let's go ahead and refresh and up here is our database event and as you can see that there is a package right here if you take a look right now let's go ahead and start the session and we're going to go ahead and uh, delete this database so this will stop the database and it it should put it in our event so we're gonna go ahead and view target <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just refresh it. it. It takes a little bit of time since it's asynchronous, so it'll give us uh, right here. These are the old events. So we're going to go ahead and refresh this again and let's go ahead and create another database right here. All right, let's look at the, this takes, as I said, a little bit time to retrieve the data from the server. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh this and take a look on the session as you can see right here this is a recent session 915.2 and as you can see right here that uh, database name database underscore name action was taken on master and uh, database name is my db and this is the nt user this is the username that who has created this database so basically this is how you use t sql script and sql server management studio to create an extended event and you can pick and choose what event you wanted to capture and we saw that um, how to create an event package you can go back to event package and add more events if you would like to you can uh, modify your current uh, extended uh, event session and we l also looked at different option uh, to save the event if you don't if you wanted to just look at the live data you don't have to save uh, uh, event output you just can look at the uh, uh, live data but it takes a little bit um uh, in my case uh, it's it takes a little bit longer so i didn't want to run it live data so i would just wanted to go ahead and save it and show the results to you and i hope this video helps